Hello ladies, it's Claire and this is tutorial 5 of Joanna Basford's Magical Jungle colouring page. As you can see this is my progress so far and today we're going to be looking at um, putting clouds in the sky and also I'll tell you what leaf colours I've blended um, from yesterday's tutorial. Then what we're going to do um, at the end is just put in um, a grassy bank here and you can see, I think, yes you can, that I've got the colours out ready for that. But what I wanted to explain to you first is, you will see that I've put the sky background in. And when I thought about it, it's exactly the same technique that we used yesterday for putting in the sea. And because there's a lot of flowers in the background, it's actually quite detailed to, to colour it in, which would have taken far too long on a video. So because we've already covered the technique, and as I say, it's exactly the same as the ocean. I thought if I put the sky in, we could concentrate on how we do the clouds. Now, the colours that I've used for the sky, and I will write this down on the Facebook and YouTube posts, are um, cloud blue, powder blue, blue slate, Caribbean sea, and blue lake. And because I had about 10 centimetres between here and here, they were literally just divided into roughly about two centimetre bands. Before we start on the clouds, let me just explain what else I've added in. You can see that I've added in these leaves here. And um, these are blended, instead of um, up and down, they are bland blended right to left. And that just works because you can see where you've got the highlight on one side and then the dark of the leaf on the next because it's sitting, this leaf is sitting behind this one. It just gives a really nice shadow effect so you can blend sideways as well as kind of up and down. So the colours that I've used here are lime peel, Prussian green and dark green. Now hopefully you will be able to see just about these... Um, orange leaves here which I've coloured in, these kind of frondy leaves. Now I've made those orange and red because as I say on the colour wheel blues and oranges are opposite on the wheel so go really well together and also I've made them red towards the bottom because I know that this is going to be green and red and green go well to together on the colour wheel. So just as a quick um, explanation of colour, again I'll write them down, there's Spanish orange yellowed orange, orange, pale vermilion, poppy red and then towards the bottom I've used permanent red. Again they're all Prismacolor colours. You can see that I've done some work down here. What I've done is um, just blended some of these wonderful pink and purple colours that I used yesterday on the Campanula flowers and that literally just blended in the same way as we did tutorial one with these purple leaves at the top and just as a reminder, that is deco pink, pink, process red and magenta. Now what you can see is I've started to work in this bottom right hand corner. Because we've got an awful lot of blue and um, in the ocean and the sky, I just wanted to balance that out a little bit at the bottom of the picture. So these, these grassy fronds, I've kind of made blue colours, which works quite nice against the other colours that we've got here. And... They are very, very simply blended in the same way that we've blended these and these flowers. And they are sky blue, true blue and Copenhagen blue. What you might also be able to just about see here is I, some of you might know that I lost my beloved chocolate Labrador Cadbury very recently, um, which, which broke my heart. And there was some pieces of colouring that I used as, as therapy to get me through those darkest days. So what I do now is, just in remembrance of her, and I'm trying not to cry at this point, is um, sign a little paw print at the bottom, bottom right of all my pictures. Excuse me, ladies. Just as a little reminder of Cadbury. Um, okay. So I think that's about it for the additional things that were just blending as how we've blended before. What I wanted to point out before I show you the clouds is, you can see here that clearly the, the ocean is blue and the sky is blue. Now we used warm blues here yesterday. We used warm blues for the ocean. So clearly you don't want to use the same blues in the sky that you use for the ocean, otherwise you wouldn't be able to tell the two of them apart. So what I've used is the colors that I listed to you before are actually cool blues. 
um, and you can see again that I've just gone from light to dark. What I have also done is mount the phone camera to a chair instead of the table so hopefully as we're colouring that may rectify some of that shuddering you may have noticed over over previous tutorials fingers crossed so where do we start i am just going to i think you can see the the colors that i've got out here but i just wanted to quickly show you um this and then i can put it to one side it's a stedler pigment fine liner and this is what i used for cadbury's little paw print down here very useful and it doesn't smudge then what i wanted to show you is this little piece of equipment it's a stationary island white chalk marker and it's a three millimeter round bullet tip now i'm just going to grab a piece of black paper and quickly show you how a chalk marker usually works so i'll just write here and you, you just use it as a normal pen so you can see i've written hello there and it's usually used by people um, who have chalkboards outside of restaurants and they write menus, etc. on the on the footpaths and on the sidewalks. But what we're going to use it for is to actually dab on some clouds in the sky. Now, when you get these markers, you can see the bullet tip. And what you do is when you first get them and they're brand new, you actually push the nib into the page like so which presses the ink down onto the brand new tip and then you can see you can see that there's a lot more colour coming out. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that effect. So rather than writing, we're going to use that dab effect and then smudge it in to make some lovely little clouds. So here we go. And again, as per the brick in waves yesterday, this can be completely random and it can be in any part of the sky that you want. I tend to like mine low down because the contrast between the colours isn't so great. So here we go. And again, as I say, this can be completely, completely random. I think what I'll just do is I will zoom you in just that little bit so you can see better what I'm working on. Hopefully that should work okay. So I'm just going to literally dab a cloud shape on like this and then all I'm going to do is use my what, my little finger and just make the edges of that cloud fluffy and you can see how nicely that works now you can barely see that so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight it a tiny bit again and you can go over it as many times as you want for that lovely effect and you can just about see that. I think, yes, you can in shot there. You'll see it more as I go along a bit higher up. Um, and as I say, you can go over it as many times as you want to just get some 3D effects right in the middle of that cloud. And you want it subtle. You don't want them kind of in your face. Because remember, we're kind of in a, in a tropical jungle, so there won't be that many clouds in the sky, you would hope. There are in North East England where I'm at, but, but probably not in a tropical jungle. So again, I'm just going to go along here and dab myself some colour like this. And then with my finger, just dab in some fluffy clouds. And you can see it's very, very, very simple indeed, but works extremely well. And again, I'm going to do one disappearing behind this leaf here. And if you go over the leaf like I have there, it just wipes off because it's chalk. So it'll just rub off. But once it dries, it won't. So if you're going to correct your mistake, you need to do it, you know, within the first few seconds. I'm going to put some up here in a slightly darker area. And kind of it coming out of this side. And that you'll probably see probably a little bit better because it's on a slightly deeper colour and again over here totally random and I'm being careful not to dab that campanula leaf which I have slightly so I'm just going to grab myself a q-tip and just wipe that away like that and then re-dab it like so Again, 
one just over here somewhere. And as I say, I'm not going to put any very many too high up because I don't want, and you can see, I've just dropped some on that again, which I'm going to take my trusty cotton bud and just wipe that away completely. So then I'm just going to... And what you want to be careful of is not touching any of the other part of the page while you've still got this on your finger. So I'm just going to wipe my finger on there. And then I think I'm going to probably leave it at that. I may put a little bit, maybe over here somewhere, just so that we're not missing that bit of background out. Like that. And I think I'm pretty pleased with that. I think I'm going to leave that the way it is. So, I'm going to put my chalk marker down. And that is how to make very, 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 very easy clouds. So, I'm going to put that to one side. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you these colours. So if you remember from yesterday, we had eggshell at the bottom of this sand line. So I've got my eggshell out again because I'm going to be blending into that colour. Then for the, the grassy bank, I've got um, yellow chartreuse. I've got chartreuse. I've got spring green, apple green, grass green and peacock green. And you can probably see that some of my pencils are very, very small now. I'm not going to use a pencil extender just um, for, for time constraints. Um, but you could if you wanted to, if some of your pencils were really short. So I'm just going to move those out of the way. And what I'm going to do is, because we're doing horizontal stripes again, I'm just going to turn my book round like we did yesterday. Like so and I'm going to make sure that you can see that particular section I think you can see that so I'm going to tip that forward slightly yes so I'm pretty pleased that you can see that there and what I'm going to show you is yeah that's perfect is kind of this section from here to here but again as with the ocean yesterday clearly there's bits behind the plants which are out of shot now but which are all also in the grassy background which after the tutorial I will go away and colour in. So going back to our colour sandwiches from yesterday I'm going to start with my eggshell colour and I'm just going to make myself a very very light touch little stripe as we did yesterday here and I'm going to go to this plant and no further and as I say I will do the rest once we've finished the, the tutorial so just a lovely little stripe and Catherine Cleary has um, reliably informed me that I was going to say we're going up to the the neck of the deer but it's not a deer apparently it's an carpy um, and I have looked those up online and she's quite correct so the back end of the animal will be black and white striped and then it will have a brown body so apologies for me calling it a deer in past tutorials it is in fact an oak carpy so there we go, thank you Catherine so I'm going to go to my first grassy colour which is um, yellow chartreuse and it's a very, very light green. It's almost a yellowy green because what I want it to do is gradually build up in colour to, to deep green going down over here. And I'm just going to check that you can see that grass at the bottom. Yes, you can. So um, I'm going to blend this into the lovely sand colour just by doing a very light hand strip there. And then a firmer strip. And again, I'm thinking in the back of my mind how many colours I've got to go down here, which is going to dictate how wide I make these stripes. So I'm just pressing slightly harder there. And you can immediately see it's kind of a, a lovely, lovely light green colour. And that would come out just this side of his head there. And I'm going to go back to my eggshell. And just blend over this line and make the sand disappear into kind of what would be, I guess, um, like a grassy, a grassy fort, a grassy foreshore leading up to the beach. I mean, you can. I've I've seen in some tutor, um, in some pieces where um, people have kind of put little bits of sea grass in between 
the, the, the grassy background and the sea, but for the purposes of, of blending this, I just wanted to do it quite plain, just to show you how to do it really. And again, it's really good because you're getting your own trial at backgrounds as well. So you can see how that sand now just melts into that first colour of green. And I'm going to go back and make this a little bit wider. I'm pressing quite hard. And make this stripe a little bit wider, I think. And then again over here, pressing quite hard. And just... I'm just adjusting the table there so it didn't hit the chair where the camera's mounted. And just blend that in a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to put a tiny bit of eggshell on that bit there. Just so that it looks like the sand's hitting there as well. Okay. So I think I can put my eggshell to one side for a moment. And I'm just going to go back to my yellow chartreuse and put a light hand... So I'm hardly pressing, just a tiny strip there, and then what we'll do is we'll get the next colour green, which is chartreuse. So we've got yellow chartreuse here, and then we've got a proper green chartreuse there. So again, same principle, I'm going to go over that light bit of the previous colour in a light hand of this colour, just down to the line of the acarpi. Like that. And then just blend that away with the yellow chartreuse colour. Now then, we're going to be working in the strip that's at the side of his neck, which you can see in shot there. Because as you can see, it's going to get darker, but it's going to be behind his body. So we're just going to do the tiny strips over here. So I'm just going to go down like so. So lighter there firmer over here and then back to the yellow chartreuse to just blend that over a little bit like that there we go so I'm going to put that yellow chartreuse down as well and I'm going to go for my next colour which is, um, you can't see it there the, the English version of that name has actually come off because the pencil's short, but it is it is spring green. So a little again, again on this little strip here, light hand over this bit. And as I say, don't worry if you go on to the acarpi because he's going to be very deep browns and black, so you'll be covering him up. And again, a firmer strip here. Like that. Back to the previous colour. And you can see those two, those because they're both a shade of chartreuse, they blend together quite nicely. And what I've got is there, I've got a little bit too much pigment. I don't know if you can see, but on the page there, I've got a little bit too much pigment from that green chartreuse colour. So I've just got my Tombow eraser, and I'm just going to rub over that very slightly just to get that deep line out and then just go back over it that's better so again a lighter hand little piece of the sandwich going back to the next colour which is my apple green light touch And what we're going to do is, as you can see, just gradually, gradually make that grassy bank darker as it goes further down into the undergrowth. Like that. And again, don't be too worried about the tree line because that's going to be dark brown. So we're literally just blending in the same stripe, same colour sandwiches that we did yesterday. Same technique. Again, I'm going to make myself a little lighter strip here. And now you can see we're coming to the 
of the tummy of the okapi. So this next colour will be longer strips. And again, thinking about how many colours you've got to use. I've only got another two colours to use after this, but I want the base to be quite dark going behind these fronds of plants here. So, which I believe you can see. Yes, you can. There we go. Let's go back there slightly with my spring green. That's nice. Okay, so I'm going to put the spring green down. I'm going to go to grass green. I'm going to make this a slightly wider line. Let's see, because I've got two colours left. So, and apologies if you can hear my puppy crying in the background. She's desperate for mum's attention. Little puppy Hope. We got her when we lost our beloved Cadbury. Hope is actually... A yellow Labrador, Cadbury by her name, you'll probably realise it was a chocolate Labrador. We decided to go for a, a different colour so we didn't draw too many comparisons. So again, I'm just going to go over this light shade with this look. It's a really lovely deep shade of grass green. Just with a little lighter hand, like that. I'll have to show you Hope on one of these videos. Um, quite soon. She's she's absolutely adorable. She's a little ruffian, but she's adorable. We have another dog called Freckle. He's our Dalmatian, a chocolate spot Dalmatian. Okay, so I'm just going to rub that slightly because I've got too much colour again. There we go, that's nothing you can't fix. That's better. It's because I'm talking too much, you see need to concentrate more. I'm just going to go to the apple green and under this very side where it's further up his body I'm just going to put a tiny bit in there because it'll just show that apple green line coming across there. And then I'm going to start to go to this grass green and build that colour up. Again I'm leaving it, I'm going to make that wider actually but I'm going to leave a strip there. And what I'll, what I'll do is I'll show you the deepest strip but I won't go into all the details of colouring behind these fronds because it'll be too detailed for the video, but you'll get the idea once I've done the last colour. And that really is, once you get to this grass green colour, it is really, really nice. There we go. And as I say, I'm not using a blender pencil with this, but you could do if you wanted. You can use the colours as many times as you want going down in variation and um, then smooth it out, all, smooth all out at the end with your blender pencil. But I'm just going to do this for the sake of expediency because you'll get the idea. I'm just going to go around this plant. I'm not going to colour behind this plant because it's going to be too detailed. Like I say, I will finish off all of these little details after I finish the tutorial and then take a picture for the post to show you where you will be up to by the time you finish this lesson. This is me just going back to my apple green and melding over that line. You'll have got this probably really well by now, having done all of the ocean yesterday. And by the time you've done the sky in the same principle as well, you'll be, you'll be an expert. So I'm going to put my apple green to one side and I'm going to go for my deepest shade, which is peacock green. And all I'm going to do is, I'm not going to colour down to these fronds, I just wanted to show you the depth of the shade that will be at the base. And then what I'll do is, I'll go away and make sure that that's all tidy behind those fronds. But you can see that by the time it gets to the bottom of the picture, that green is going to be quite deep. Again, if I just put a light line there, like that, and then a tiny bit of firmer colour there you'll be able to see what it's going to turn out like. And I know that looks messy, but I will finish it off. It was just to kind of show you the gradation of colour that we'll get by the time you're finished at the bottom of the picture. And again, you would just go back to your grass green and just blend that variation in colour away, like so. Like that. And that, if I turn my book round, I'm just going to put these last two pencils down. If I 
turn my book around like so. And what I'll do is I'll zoom out again, I think. Like that. And then you'll be able to see that it looks like the beach is going into kind of a lovely, a lovely grassy, lovely grassy uh, meadow floor of the jungle. Like that. So hopefully that's going to um, get you well underway with your sky and um, the, the, the background and some more of these leaves. What we'll have a look at, it may not be tomorrow, it may be, may be the day after, because I'm probably going to give you a chance to catch up with all of this because it's quite a lot for today. Um, I think for the next tutorial we'll have a look at the tree and also the, the butterfly. But again, any questions on what we've done today, drop me a line and I'll be happy to get back to you. Thanks ladies, I'll speak to you soon. Bye.